Let's return to our top story, the visit by the Chinese Premier. Joining me live now is the former Australian ambassador to China, Jeff Raby. Jeff, great to have you join us on the program. A big day, first senior visit in seven years. How significant is it? Good to be with you, Karen. Thank you. Uh, it's hugely significant. Um, this basically marks the normalisation of the relationship between Australia and China, which has been in a very bad state for the last seven years. Uh, we've had annual reciprocal high-level meetings like this since the 1980s. Uh, they were suspended from 2017. And so with this, the reciprocal meeting to the Prime Minister's visit to China last year, uh, we can say that the relationship is uh, back in uh, on, a, on a normal basis. On a, on a normal basis, it's interesting, though, how would you characterise normal now? Because it's not back to what it was when you were started your ambassadorship in Beijing, is it? No, and, and we can't expect uh, those Helsinki days of the relationship uh, to return. They were different days, different times. But I think uh, a lot of the commentary is focusing on the fact that we have differences. We've always had differences. We've always had uh, issues over human rights, Tibet, uh, Xinjiang, uh, Taiwan. Uh, we've had differences over China's uh, behaviour in the region on occasions. Uh, and we have had Australians imprisoned in China. So um, it's quite normal for countries to have differences. And I think that's the point that needs to be made. Um, and that's taking us back to where we were. Look, uh, in the seven years since um, uh, the last high-level visit like this, China has continued to grow massively. It's, uh, been, there's been a big shift in power from the United States to China. Uh, seven years ago, China accounted for just 60% of US GDP. Today, it's 75%. So it's a very different world, and it's a very, a very much more complex relationship to manage than in my day. It's super complex. And one of the things I've, I've read a number of analysts saying that this is Beijing. The wolf warrior diplomacy has been shelved, and they're really now looking to the prospect of a second Trump presidency. And if he is to slap massive tar tariffs and so on on the Chinese exports... They need other options. So it's a bit of pragmatism happening here as well. Well, I think, Karen, all international relations are pragmatic. Um, and uh, China is uh, very much focused on Australia as a supplier of raw materials and energy and as a regional uh, partner. Uh, I think uh, there's no point speculating on what a Trump presidency may or may not do. Indeed, the Biden presidency has continued the um, unilateral uh, trade measures that uh, Trump had imposed on China, they've continued uh, to operate those measures. So um, there could be higher tariffs from Trump, but uh, as a market, Australia doesn't really matter that much uh, to China. We're much more important as a supplier of raw materials and energy. As an ambassador, give us a sense, if you can, as to how the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister will raise the case of Yang Hen Jun today. How... how you spoke about the Australians that have been imprisoned. We, we're lucky we've got uh, Chung Lei in, in our bureau today. She's with us throughout this visit and will be joining me on air a bit later. But how will they raise the case of young Hen Jun during the discussions? Well, the leaders will sit down and they have uh, their talking points to go through. Um, and presumably, given the high level of public interest in this, young Hen Jun's case will be very high up on the list. Uh, and... Uh, they will uh, uh, make representations, uh, first of all, on his treatment. Uh, he has serious health uh, issues, uh, seeking uh, uh, humanitarian assistance. I think they'll seek uh, 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 Chinese early release of uh, Yang Han Jun on uh, compassionate grounds. Um, and they'll also make clear to the Chinese that this is an issue of great interest to the Australian public and it will influence and shape uh, how, the, how the Chinese handle it will influence and shape uh, how the domestic uh, audience in Australia responds to China. There, seem, there seems to be a really strong level of goodwill within the Chinese population towards Australia still. It, it, a couple of things I, I would look at is the exports of wine. They've bounced back dramatically and uh, already that, that, that uh, appetite is still there. And then you look at the, the amount of Chinese students, they still very keen on coming to Australia to learn. Yeah. And, 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 and tourists as well. I don't think that the tensions of the last uh, uh, several years have uh, damaged Australia's image or standing at all in, in, in 
China. Uh, I think we're still seen as a very uh, valuable uh, interlocutor and a very good place uh, with which to do business um, and to travel both the students and tourists and Australian produce will continue to be recognised for the quality produce that it is. The opposition leader has said he'd like to see our trade double uh, with China, that he, he likes to see a prospering economic relationship. So interesting message from him at the moment. H how do you see Australia's economic ties with that Asian powerhouse? Well, they're inevitably going to be uh, deeper and deeper. I mean, it's just remarkable if you go back. I did a few sums before the interview just uh, to refresh my memory. But, you know, trade between Australia and China, our exports rather, uh, to China since the last high-level visit have almost doubled. And that's just in, in seven years. And the, the number's extraordinary. The um, It's like $22 billion, $220 billion of uh, exports to China from Australia. That is almost equivalent to the total uh, imports and exports between China and Russia. So we have an extraordinarily important mm -hmm. role in China's economy and China's development. And that's also a very good leverage for us to use in our um, bilateral relationship with China. Uh, it will only get deeper because the complementarity between the two economies is deeper. But one thing I'd hope from this visit, and it may happen in Western Australia, is that there'll be um, some focus on uh, the green energy transition uh, and uh, the move to renewables. Australia is the the biggest, um, one of the biggest energy exporters in the world. China is the biggest energy importer. And I think in the um, transition to a low emission economy, there's tremendous opportunity for Australia and China to cooperate. And so I think with this visit, uh, it's an opportunity to lift our sights beyond the issues that have dogged the relationship for the last seven years and start to look at a future of greater and deeper cooperation between Australia and China. That's why I say it's important to think about the relationship as having been normalised, and on that basis we can build a bigger and stronger relationship into the future. Former Australian Ambassador to China, Jeff Raby, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Karen.